Hello, welcome back to uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm Martin Wenzel. Uh, just in for one flight tonight, it looks like we're going to get in. Um, I'm going to move this uh, video screen down. Since we do not have... not going to be using PackX today, I'm going to try to use self-loading cargo. Um, my preferred one. I like PackX, but I think self-loading cargo... They, they both got their ups and downs. Uh, self-loading cargo still struggles. Obviously, uh, they haven't updated with Microsoft Flight Center, but I think we should be able to do it, hopefully. So, it is 5.01 in the morning here in uh, a Khartoum, Sudan. And I'm just gonna... We're looking good there. Let me just, just get things set up here. Make sure everything's where we need to be. That should be good. Uh, before we get too much further, let's uh, just jump over. I want to show you. Uh, I'd rather do it like this. Show you the the map of where we've gone so far on our world tour. We can zoom in on some places. You know, Mauritius, uh, Reunion Island. Um, we are here in Sudan, and we are going to be going to Eritrea right there. So. That's what we got so far for Africa, and that's basically where we've gone, so let's close that out. And jump back over here. Alright, so let's get this plane going. Uh, I want to take off. 2.30 is what I've got in here for uh, self-loading cargo. Um, we're supposed to have 161 passengers. For some reason, the I need to, I need to adjust the self-loading cargo um, A320neo uh, layout. Doesn't have enough seats. Um, or at least it's got a very small plane set up and I want to like make some different ones but I haven't done that yet maybe I'll do that tonight after this flight uh, just to do some take take it easy tonight so let's get inside first and let me pull up my checklist I want to just do our quick um, let me make sure yep sound is looking right all right um, want to check the parking brake is set. Ooh, that's weird. Okay, parking brake is um, on. Wipers are hitting the wrong buttons. Everything. Why? You having the wrong buttons? Uh, wipers are off. It's kind of hard with the flashing light right now. Spoilers are retracted. You'd probably use a flashlight. Uh, spoilers retracted. Um, this is not live time, so I have it set to. Uh, basically a 12 hour difference from what I'm running right now. It's 5.03 here in the evening. I want to do a 5.03 in the morning takeoff or 5.30 it'll be. Um, um, engine, engine masters are off. Uh, n mode is normal. Thrust levers are idle. Make sure they work and everything. Um, flaps are retracted. Gear is down. Anti-skid is on. That's going to be right there. Landing gear is down. Fuel quantity we will check once we... I got the plane going, so... Get our battery masters on. I already turned up the integral lighting, so that'd be on right away. Uh, before... Co-pilot screws something up. We'll do that. Um, external power is available, so we'll turn that on. Strobe lights to auto. Adiers. Nav. down my volume so it's not bleeding over too much. Um, Adir's APU engine fire test. We'll do that right now. Hopefully that's not too bad. If, if that's a problem, if it's bleeding over on the microphone, just let me know in the chat. Um, APU engine fire test instruments, displays. Uh, we'll turn that up. Oh, pretty much okay right now. Yeah, they can actually be a little bit. We'll pump all these lights up. This one's always very, very dim. Get the co pilot a little bit later. I'll turn on the integral down here. 
We'll give a little bit of flood. And do our glare shield. And that should be pretty good right there. All right, um, seatbelt signs are on. Or not on yet because we haven't actually started uh, getting the passengers on board, which we can start doing, I think, now. Um, just because we're not turning the APU on, we do have the external power. Uh, make sure the door is open because I do. I am using the pushback helper, so I can control the door right there. Um, so go outside. Make sure the door is open because, and it is. So we'll start boarding. Oh, here we go. Ready for boarding. Get our music. I come through. We're ready to get going now. So as soon as you're ready, you can open the doors and start letting the passengers on board. Thank you. Hi there, we are pretty much ready to go up here. Uh, we've got the load sheets on board, so once everyone's on board, please uh, feel free to close the doors and uh, we can get going. No problem. Okay, great. We're all missed on. Okay, yeah, I don't know why I kind of jumped to that last one, but I think it's because the cargo's already loaded and everything. But we got our information. Cabin not secured, crew not seated, cabin music is playing. There we go. Get it up, pumped up a little bit. And we can see the passengers coming on. Yeah, it, it seems like it, I think it's a little bit too short. I think you need a few more rows. Is what's going on here? The passengers coming on. I think they do good real time in this one. Uh, Pack X real time just seems a little bit too long. But I like this because they all have their own a lot more information and what they're doing, all that. Um, greeting passengers. That's the, the, the cabin crew. So I really like this one. All right, let's uh, get in, back in the plane, and keep it going. Um, let's check our fuel level. Fuel level, I need about, that's why I need 6,800. I think it's 75, so we're a little bit short, but that should be okay, um, unless we have to divert. Then we'll be in trouble. Um, and so that means we can turn on the no, or the seatbelts. And the no smoking sign to auto. Emergency exit lights are armed. Let's see air lights test. And let's request our ATC clearance at this point. Forgot to kind of go into where we are. We'll let the co-pilot deal with this. Well, actually, I have to acknowledge it. Eritrea two one four cleared to Asmara Airport as filed. Take off runway one eight climb and maintain seven thousand feet. Departure on one two four decimal seven squawk six six zero one. Eritrea two one four read that correct. Contact ground on one one eight decimal one. All right, we'll get that set to 7,000, our initial uh, height. Uh, we're going to be taking off runway 18, which I believe is going to be pretty close to where we're at. So we're not going to have to go too far, but we'll double check that before we get moving. Um, so I didn't really introduce this. This is uh, our 31st flight of our world tour, at least here on YouTube. I've done 132 flights total uh, trying to do this world tour, but resetting the clock for the YouTube video scene. Uh, we're at Khartoum International Airport, Khartoum, Sudan, uh, Hotel Sierra Sierra Kilo. Um, though Microsoft Flight Simulator and everything else goes Hotel Sierra 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 for this airport, but they did change their ICAO sign recently within the last few years. And we're going to be flying to Asmara International Airport in Asmara Eritrea, which is Hotel Hotel Alpha Sierra. Uh, this flight's based on Tarco Air 214, which I believe is a Sudanese uh, airline, but we're going to, and it's usually flown in a Boeing 737, but I'm going to be using the Airbus 320 Neo uh, fly by wires A32NX mod with the Eritrean Airlines livery created by Tom IHBK. Um, yeah, that link below for all those. Uh, I don't have a link. On, uh, I didn't update the link to reflect that we're using that I'm using self-loading cargo decided to do that the last second so um self-loading cargo I believe if you want to get that self-loading cargo.com I think that's what it is 
Uh, just search self-loading cargo and you'll probably find it. But it's probably selfloadingcargo.com, I think. Might be, I don't think it's anything else than that. Put that away for now. Let's get into the flight computer. And we're gonna check this. Make sure our database is up to date. It's up to date still for a couple more days. Uh, we're gonna go in back to the main page here. ATSU, AOC menu, initial, press. We got that, we're departing. Hotel Sierra, Sierra Kilo, I think that should work. I'm not sure, it might not work in the computer here, but we'll see what happens. Uh, go to the net page. Actually, we can do it in net request. See, it, it, ah, see it's saying not in database. I'm thinking that must be, oh, no, it changed it. Do a Hotel Sierra, Sierra, Sierra. See if that put in the flight plan. It's not putting in the flight plan part. That's the weird thing. So it's still a little something's broken. I don't know what it is, but our cost index is 2121. Double check. Yep, cost index 21. Flight level is gonna be 370. Today our alternate is uh Oscar Echo Golf November. I'm not exactly sure where that is. Let me uh, jump to my maps here. It should show me on the map. Nope, it's not showing me on the map there. That's weird. Usually it'll show you where that is. So I don't know where that is exactly. But if we need to go to it, we will figure that out. Um, Let's see. Go back to the checklist. We've got in this page one. Let's do the flight plan now. Uh, we are going to be taking off for runway 18. Let's put that in right now. And they don't have any SIDs available. Okay, and we're gonna go first to Tabco. Tango, Alpha, Bravo, Kilo, Oscar, Tabco. And we're going Dendi, Delta, Echo, November, Delta, India. Um, then we're going to be on the Airway, Uniform, Yankee. Uh, let me zoom in here. 866. 866. Oh no, we don't put it in there. I don't believe we do actually. Right, we got to insert first, then we click on Dendi, Airways. Uniform Yankee 866 will be the airway, and that's going to be to the VOR Kilo Sierra Lima. And then we're going to be switching over to Bravo 526 airway. We're going to take that to the VOR for our final, which is uh, Alpha Sierra Mike. Asmara Airport, and hopefully we'll get a, um, a star. We'll figure out what that what we're getting for our approach. Insert that. Double check on the plan page. Right here is usually a good place to do it. Close enough that you can see. Capco, Dendi, Garcia, um, Tison. There's not a ton. Like Tison, we didn't even put Tison in, but that's like on that airway. But, but we could have just kind of just done direct everything because the airways really don't really come into play. But we'll put in what the flight plan had. Exactly. Okay, 71 passengers remaining to be boarded. Now this one doesn't give me a, you know, it doesn't give us a time. That's that's the nice thing to kind of they have on the um, Pack X, the time to get loaded, but they're at 69. Uh, we are 15 minutes from when I wanna, well, I wanna get take take off at uh, 5.30. I wanna be in the air, so should be able to do that. And if, if not, well, then we'll be a little late. All right, our uh, flight time, our block time, estimated is an hour 34, our schedule is an hour 35. So, 
Uh, we got 161 passengers. Self-loading cargo is limited to 158 on this plane or whatever it was. I'm going to have to adjust that. Cargo, we have 300 kilos, 17,000 kilos for our payload. And that's where we are at next. We got to go to our init page too. Get back in there. Init page two. And we want our zero fuel weight. What we want to do is we want to check. I'm just going to do it from this page. Um, our fuel right there is what we need, 6,800 or so. Um, and I already got the payload in there. Pretty good center of gravity. But we can just take that in. Our block fuel, not allowed. We need a fuel planning first. Fuel planning, we only need 3,200, it's saying. But we're at 6,800. 6.84 Now usually at this point that the fuel is going down I think that's because you put the APU on it starts using fuel actually So by not doing that until later you actually save the fuel Um, now we're gonna jump over to the performance page Get our V1 speed 132 VR 133 and our V2 is 137 transition altitude is 7,000 Flaps are going to be one, and we'll do a, if you want to do a flex takeoff, we'll put that at 58 degrees um, Celsius. And that is all we need to do in the computer right now. We're going to go down to the predictive windshield, turn that to auto, cockpit door locked. And really, we don't have to do that until you know all the passengers are on. We can be out there, go on, welcome them on the plane, typically. But we're gonna just do that. And 39 passengers. We are looking pretty good. Let's jump up to the overhead panel. Actually, I want to go to the layer shield. Uh, we want to put in our parametric reference, which is. We'll get the Addis. I think they have the Addis here. No, they don't. So I'm going to pop open that website. Medar-taf.com. T-I-F. M-E-T-A-R-T-A-F.com. And you can just look up any airport. It'll tell you if it's VFR, conditions, IFR, etc. We are at... Hotel Sierra Sierra Kilo. Uh, VFR, it is 33 degrees um, night, so we're going to be actually, the temperature is going to be getting cooler there because it's actually, I believe, midnight in reality. But our uh, pressure is 29.77. And visibility is 10 kilometers plus, uh, no ceiling. 16 knots at 170 degrees for the wind. Uh, VFR um, conditions. All right, uh, got our initial altitude is 7,000. Oh, don't want to do that. Uh, VFR uh, 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 dashed speed heading. IRS, IRS alignment. Yep, that's good. Uh, we're at arc and 10. Uh, nautical miles and the flight directors glow both on Suddenly having can't talk All right now at this point we've got 18 passengers we can Let's go above and we're gonna do we're gonna clear the white lights so Crew oxygen supplies on everything else. We did the nav already over here fuel pumps and I'm gonna hit the APU master switch, get the APU going, hit the start switch, and flip the navigation lights on, and then we'll have external power off once we have the APU. See the APU spooling up. Electrical page, we are right now on the external power. Once the APU is there and we switch over, disconnect the external power, it will have a little line right there. See our pressure 
that for our height, our gross weight. Engine, bleed, back to APU, air conditioning, temperature 24. Um, that's pretty good. I think. I'm not good at my uh, Celsius all the time. All right. Flight plan, you can see the APU coming in. You got 115 volts, hertz, and it's available. So let's go up top. And once we get to all the passengers on, we'll hit the seatbelt sign. And we will start getting our pushback. Let me just check where runway 18, yeah, it's gonna be, we're gonna turn to uh, the left, I believe. Uh, we wanna be facing our right. If I can get, I don't know where my head is right now. There we go. We wanna be facing over there. We'll go outside. Look we'll at it. And I think we've been successful. No. What? No, 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 no. What's going on? Hi, Captain. All passengers are on board and doors have been Yeah, see, we still got the Phantom okay. passengers kind of stuck, not going to their seats. Very frustrating. Yeah, see, that's the problem. It seems like no matter what you do, you run into that. You see that seated. So what I'm going to do, we'll just have to uh, restart it. Really annoying. And we'll just do an automatic, immediate uh, reset. We still got those passengers, so we don't want to restart the flight. We want to do a whole new one. See, this is why I haven't been using it because there's a, just an issue with that. And unfortunately, a really frustrating thing. So dump this head because it goes off the real clock, but we want to... Or yeah, yeah, it goes current Zulu time for that. It doesn't go off of the game clock. I think there is an option where I can change that. And I think I used to have it set, but I'm not there right now. Let's just make sure all this is correct. Make sure we got the A3 funny. And we'll start the flight again. And basically all we gotta do is we just gotta um, We just have to put the passengers on instantly. So what we're gonna do is right click. Oh, ready for boarding. We're ready to get going now, so as soon as you're ready, you can open the doors and start letting the passengers on board. Thank I mean, you. that's the issue, it, it and it's not a big deal, but I don't want to have those passengers not seated. No problem. Time. We're going to board all the passengers instantly. They are on. We're going to close the doors. Hi there. Uh, we're ready to go, yes. Yeah. So ready to once go. everyone's on board, please feel free to close the doors and uh, we can get going. Okay, great. We're all missed on. Hi, Captain. Okay. All are on board okay. Let's get our pushback. Um, we're going to turn on our beacon light. We are ready to move. And we're going to get the tug over here. Oh, we didn't disconnect the power. Yes. APU bleed. Even though the power just disconnected, but we have our APU bleed. Turn off the external power. Our electrical switch Ladies over and gentlemen, to that. welcome aboard the aircraft this morning. My name is Steve. I'm your pilot today, along with First Officer David and your senior flight attendant, Alana. She, along with the rest of the crew, will be making our way around the cabin, making sure you're comfortable and ready to get us on our way. We're not actually anticipating any delays, so we should be arriving on time. Um, we've just heard the guys on the There's ground no finish the final bits of luggage into <laughs> the aircraft, female, so uh, we should be on our way very shortly. We are just waiting to receive uh, clearance to push back in taxi. Um, if you could help the cabin crew by getting yourself sat comfortably with seatbelts fastened, that would be fantastic. Once we're airborne, we'll be starting our in-flight services, but for now, I'd like to thank you for choosing the flight with us today, and I hope you enjoy the flight. Thank you. Alright, so we're going to start our pushback. At least the parking brake. And we're gonna start up the engine. So ignition, engine two. Oh, 
Again, I always get confused which way to turn. I think left. Yes. Left, and that's going to dip you the way. Hi, Marlin. Thanks for showing up. Uh, yeah, not, not too many people have popped in yet. I don't know if it's just not expecting there to be a flight or what, but that's all right. I want to get a flight in, and I'm fine flying on my own if that's what happens. We'll go straight, and we will stop right here. Set the parking brake. Engine 2 is spooled up. It's an invisible tug, as you can see. <laughs> put away that for now. I think we can just... Yeah, we'll put away for now. I think we we'll, might need it later. Open the door. Alright, uh, we need to... Alright, start engine one. You can hear the safety announcement. Um, and with Pack X, it's like you get to pick that safety announcement and all that stuff. Um, every flight. Uh, in here, you when you start the flight, you can pick the sound pack, and you can actually put a lot more sounds in uh, with stuff like cargo. Everyone is in their seat. It's a full flight because it's a small plane. I love this little manifest here. It gives you what they have for carry-on bags and checked bags, what they're doing, their age, their uh, gender. Uh, what seat they're in. Uh, a lot of stuff. You click on them. Well, if you click on uh, this one, click on them, it'll give you a lot more. What's going on? What they're thinking? Uh, this is going to be some cabin crew interactions in 1.6. I can't wait. Really hope they can work this out with Microsoft Flight Simulator so they can release that. And we have our engines available. So we can turn our APU bleed off and our master switch off. Turn our runway turn lights, our taxi lights on. Transponder is, should be set. Oh, we don't need Tara yet. A transponder, probe window heat, spoilers armed. Flaps to take off position. That's going to be one. Auto brake is set. Will be set once I do that. Uh, nose light. Is taxi anti ice required runway turn off light parking brake off weather radar on? I feel like you shouldn't have the weather radar on when you're on the ground, but that's at least what this um, checklist is telling me. I always forget to uh, change my pedals. We're gonna give a little power release the parking brake and start our taxi. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna take uh, this taxiway. I believe that was the Alpha we just passed, which is an angle one. This one's gonna end and uh, we're gonna take a right turn right at the end here and we'll be at the takeoff position. Actually, start the chronometer right now. Takeoff configuration. Just need to do a cabin check. Really don't want to have that Mac brake going. Uh, how do I do a cabin check? Maybe do say to take off. Cabin crew, say to take off, please. Thank you. Yeah. Cabin check. So we got a blue or no blue. We're gonna do takeoff memo, check green, that's what we got. Let's see, we got the windsock is actually moving a little bit there. Uh, I forgot to ask for uh, taxi clearance. Car 2, ground air train, 214 ready to taxi IFR. Always kind of forget that. Air train 214 taxi, 2 and hold short of runway 18 using taxiway alpha. Contact tower on 118 decimal. Take off. Landing lights on. Taxiing hold short runway 18 by a taxiway uh, alpha air train. Tara for our TCAS and the transponder is on. Air train. 
214 at runway 18 ready for departure IFR to Asmara. Who is ready? So we got a cabin ready check. Who is in their seats? Cleared for takeoff runway 18 Air Train Brake is uh, kind of popping on really hard there. All right, making sure we, brakes are held. Thrust 40% and one. Release. And toga. Yeah, I don't know what's killing the. Just the, yeah, something, something changed with the last update and the frames are bad. What is going on here? What? Oh, look at all the stairways. <laughs> How many stairways were there on the runway? What's going on? I don't know what is causing the, the lag on the, but we do got. Gear up, please. Up. Thrust for climb. I don't know what's going on here with the temperatures. That's normal. Doesn't look normal, it's all red. Track the flaps. Thousand seven hundred feet. Retract the spoilers. Get a nice shot of the city. Nile River down there. Sunrise coming off in front of us, or coming up as we Head east. Yeah, see, I really like the lighting that a Microsoft Flight Simulator has. It's consistent, it goes off into the distance. It's not like in sections like X Plane. It just kind of looks unrealistic. And you get that glow that you get in major cities. I'm not sure why we. I guess I didn't uh, hit the climb button again there. Right. 
So we're going to standard, oops, barometer, and once we get to 10,000, we'll t uh, turn off the, the lights. turn off the runway and nose lights at this point and then once we're at 10,000 turn off the landing lights barometric reference uh, barometric reference is at transition altitude 10 about 10,000 landing lights off anti-ice is required seatbelt sign off like a cloud coming in or something like the light is kind of faded I'm really curious with these lights. I mean, these lights seem to fade away after a certain point, whereas the... So, uh, like these are, like, something different, I guess. Alright, we're at 9,700 feet, just about. TC is not giving us any clearance yet. Now, Sutherland Cargo is very finicky about when you turn your lights off. So if you turn them off now, you're turning them off below 10,000. Turn them off just after 10,000. You didn't turn them off on time. It's really, I hope that's, I think that's something they're going to fix in the next update. When I say they, it's actually one guy. This, and very good work. And the stuff that he's got coming, uh, once it gets worked on Microsoft Flight Center, it's going to be pretty awesome. Strobe lights should be on, actually. Something. Oh, I, don't know, I just I never noticed that before. It just seemed like something popped out. Yeah, I don't know why we're getting this uh, temperature reading here. Um, I feel like something red like that is an issue. Um, I don't know why we're having that though. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments below. I am, how can't I, uh, how am I, what happened to my, uh, I had a camera that was kind of set for both of these, um, electrical, let's go to, yeah, engine, everything looks fine, yeah, I don't know why this, uh, EGT is showing up, I don't remember it ever showing up like that, but, who knows, Alright. Got the sunset coming in. Or the sunrise sunset. Sunrise. It is morning. As we make our way to our first waypoint, Tapco. Uh, we've got about 57 minutes it's reading. That that time's gonna kinda come down and I think it's really gonna end up being about 45 minute flight time. But when it's all said and done, everything will probably be about an hour hour and a half uh, gate to gate as they said 300 uh, just under 340 nautical miles to go and we're just about to hit 15,000 which I believe is what we were cleared to are they saying again my flight it, it when you when you import with sim brief it will put the the call sign in there and then you have Eritrean you know Echo Romeo Tango every time so that's why that's happening I need to make sure that before I think before you ask for clearance or something you can avoid that or if you change it early enough so I go in there right now I think if I change it, it's not really going to do anything now but you've seen me do this before where I have changed it Oftentimes it doesn't change what ATC says. At 15,000, we're 
slated to go to 37,000, but basically we're going to get up there and then come back down with how short this flight is. So. Team already fading away in the distance. So look at the Milky Way right there. The Big Dipper or the Little Dipper? This is the Little Dipper. And then the Big Dipper is right there. And Orion's, I believe Orion's belt, right? It's really cool how all the stars, you can find everything. Or is that Orion's belt? Yeah, I, I, I what we're seeing up here, I can't tell you. <laughs> all the places, but... Pretty good sky, and it, it it shifts with the time, with the time of the year. Everything is very accurate. One of those other things. I don't know how many of you guys look up when you're doing these flights at that night sky, but it does it does move, and the stars are where they would be at this time of year, this part of the world, this time of day, and all that. That's it. That's the big dipper, right? I don't know. For sure. But see the sun it's coming. It's gonna be here. It'll be here soon. And then we'll start getting. Actually, this time of day, it makes it impossible to see the the scenery below just because of that. I think if it was just dark, we'd actually be able to see. And maybe the moon would have been out. I'm not sure. It's all right. We're gonna have a morning landing. That'll be nice. I haven't done a ton of morning landings. Are they gonna clear us? I really appreciate it. Okay, at least get to 25,000. I don't know if this is a long enough flight to the health of these passengers. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know if this is a long enough flight for us to really do. We're not going to really have any time to do. I'm not sure if I have this set to automatic or if I have to click these now. But, um, we're not, I don't think we're going to be ha We're not definitely not going to have time for a meal service. But I think we might be able to do a drink. And, you know, get some hot drinks to everyone. Um, check the neat toilet. Oh, it needs a toilet. That's nice. This person is going to be the one that's going to need it. A couple. Three. Three people. Getting close. No one's got a few people who drank at the bar, at the airport bar. Um, obviously, these are all... Everyone's... A lot of people using the Wi-Fi. Everyone's pretty satisfied. Uh, I think once we get to 21,000, I will... Uh, Turn off the seatbelt sign so people can get up and use the bathroom if they have to. But we're looking pretty good. Yeah, we're just almost a looks like we're almost a quarter of the way there. I'm hoping, I'm hoping the sun peeks over and starts uh, giving us a view of the ground because it'd be a shame to kind of miss that. But next flight will, I believe, it'll be a flight uh, we'll be going. We'll have a daytime flight up to Egypt, so we won't miss anything there. And then maybe we'll fly out of there at night or uh, in the evening, take off and get some. I think taking off at night and going into the morning is a good way to get, get those night lights. Because uh, it's cool to see these places in the day, see what it looks like, get all that scenery, and then cool to see the night lights. And when, once we get to, you know, Dubai, we have to do the night and got to do the night, but also want to do the day so we can see the islands and everything. The world islands and all that. Uh, let me see what we got. So our next flight, yeah, up to Egypt. 
Cairo. And yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a gonna be a day flight. At least that's the picture I put on the thumbnail. But the picture on the thumbnail doesn't always reflect exactly what's gonna be here. Uh, I think like this flight, because it's it's based on a Tarco Airlines flight, but I don't I, I couldn't even find really the departure time for that because they're not actually flying any flights right now. Um you know, kind of have leeway where I want to go, and I always do. I can fly the flight whenever. I try not to fly flights there just all night. But, um, the... But what I want to try to do is try to fly them at the time that they fly. Often I don't fly live, because if I was flying live, they would be all night flights where we are in the world, because... If it's day here, it's gonna be closer to night. And there are some times, I think early in the morning, I can get an afternoon flight in. The sun's up, but it's, that's not always possible for me. Yeah, I feel like if we get up to, it's always interesting, sim brief, they'll give you these um, 37,000 for the uh, cruise level on the short flight. And it's like, you're just gonna go up and then come back down, so. I think, really, there's no point to go all the way up there. We'll see it happens. But obviously, the, the higher we fly, the, the less time it's going to take us. Start, start making out a little bit of the train down there. But the contrast is so... Much just because of the way the sun's coming in. Now we're gonna start losing stars soon. all the improvement not so good the ratings but I like it on you know, different things and just uh, the the trying to figure out like when the yeah this is when I last uh, installed this yeah it's kind of like been off and on because I'm looking at some of the airports like we do have some where I used it flying on some of the videos I think even by my airport Cairo so this is x -Plane. So it's kind of weird that it, yeah, I haven't used it all the time over the last, well, I did. I just tried to use it, but you get the issues. I feel like I should have way more flights on that log because I've used it all the time in x -Plane. I can start seeing the colors again on our, I, I really like this. Um, I think they have an updated livery, actually. I don't think this is the new livery. This might be the new livery and the other one's older, but, um, I have a feeling when I looked up Eritrean Airlines, it had the other livery that kind of matches the, the, the airline logo with that, uh, little swoopy yellow thing and then the, you know, the, the green and red and blue, um, E kind of coming out of it. And when I look at the this one it doesn't really have that anywhere that logo I think the new plane it's basically all white and then the tail is that dark deep blue and then has the uh, that logo the little yellow flame with the on it or whatever so, start seeing the, the terrain looks like mostly desert pretty dry area this area of the world is get off the Nile, get off any river. You're, there's not much there.
So we're 110 nautical miles out from uh, Aquilo Sierra Lima, which is, I want to get like what that is. That's Casala, Casala, uh, Sudan still. Once we get past there, we'll, a little bit further, we'll then cross into Eritrean airspace. Um, and the only thing that I lose with, I, I'm using Volanta and I'm basically going to that for my uh, uh, flight tracking software. The problem is, is what I lose is that it doesn't show, I don't think, let me see. Yeah, it doesn't look there's any, there's no way to um, show the, like the different um, uh, uh, ATC zones. And now I just think about it, it's like, but why do I need that? I have uh, Navigraphs where I can look and see that. Uh, and as I said, right there, there it is. Once we pass, there's um, a Kasala. And once we get back to Kasala, we will then transition into the Asmara um, airspace, air control. And as you can see, basically every country in Africa has its own air control. Now, for the most part, over here they kind of, it looks like they share a lot of these countries, the smaller ones. You know, yes. And it's it's countrywide, whereas you get so you know what's going on, it's split up a little bit more. Uh, obviously, look at that, it's just ridiculous. All, you know, all the different airways, and all the airports, waypoints, everything. And it's like you can see, you know, like in America, there's all these different control areas. Uh, and then you get South America, Brazil split up a little bit. Um, you can see how Chile is split up. But you know, Africa, it seems basically every country basically just has its own. Like here you got uh, Libya, you know, Egypt's one spot, Sudan. So just kind of an interesting thing that you can get with these overlays. You know, China, a lot more areas, but then some countries is just that country. Which I guess kind of makes sense because you, know, you don't need to split it up into very tiny little spots for no reason. You need more workers, right? We passed Dendi and uh, we're on our way for Kilo, uh, Ki 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 Kilo Sierra Lima. And we're just we're, uh, only coming up at a 7,000 uh, feet per, well, not 7,000 feet. Uh, 600 feet per minute. That's just because of the higher altitudes, it takes more time. So we might not even get to that uh, cruising altitude. Let's get that, uh, those seatbelts off. There we go. And let's do, now, typically, um, crew might say, hey, can you put the seatbelts on? Do a service. Like I said, I don't, I'm not sure if I have this set to automatic. I think if it's automatic, these would be grayed out, and they would, they would just do it automatically. No. no one's jumped out of their seat because they need like use a toilet or anything. We got a few people you can see now. They're open circles. That means that they are uh, unsecured in their seats. So what I'm going to do is we're going to give a hot drink. So now these guys turn pink. That means they are going to be doing a service. I don't know where, I don't know if they're walking around top of each other. One of the crew members just disappeared. I don't know where she went. I think I showed this last time when they were, you know, the, you know how it shows the different um, sections being done. Uh, here you can see these are gonna... Oh, yeah, I'm not sure. Why'd that grade out? That, that kind of changed there, it looked like, but maybe not. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, there you go. See, serving. They're getting their stuff. So I like it. There's a little bit more going on in this than Pack X. Um, but what I do like about Pack X, and we'll notice, look at the manifest. It's like look at the names. The names are all very um, Western. They're they're not really fitting for where we're flying. Whereas Pack X has that. Now what I'm 
want to look, I, I want to kind of look and see if I can do this. He is going to be adding that in later, this idea of having those um, you know, specific area names. Um, I was going to say I was going to look and see if I could just add the names to the database and that would do that, but you'd probably have to have something where it kind of, um, again, recognizes where you are in the world and then does that. So... Now that I think about it, it's like I kind of like uh, Pack X for that. So maybe we'll just bounce back and forth for a while on them. But like I said, both have you know right now on Pack X the positives. Positive Pack X is it Pack X is that it works with Microsoft Flight Simulator no problem, no issues that I've seen. Um, but there's a little bit less that you can do with Pack X. And but what I do like, passenger names, um, some of the announcements. It does have like localized announcements. If you're if they if it has the file for that, like you'll say, oh, welcome to Johannesburg, or welcome to Cairo, welcome to London Heathrow, um, and maybe, so I, I think it even does the temperature. It might even do the temperature on the ground and all that. Now we're getting a little bit more uh, view of what's going on below us. We actually got some farmland. That's a good shot right there. Sun peeking over the horizon. We got some uh, fields down here. They must pull some irrigation in or something because I think that's the river right there. And I believe I was going to say that river is the uh, border. For the countries, but it isn't because we haven't uh, hit the uh, Sala yet. So I'm wondering if they pull, yeah, they must pull uh, irrigation in or something. I don't, or maybe this is, yeah, because it doesn't look like there's any, this is naturally green there. And even the river itself, it seems like around the river it's rockier, and so they must have some irrigation system or something going on there. But yeah, like Pack, Pack X has those localized names. That's really cool. I really like, but I really like this one because you get a little bit more control. Passengers are a little bit more um, just doing things. So I can't wait until. You know, unfortunately, it's only got one guy working on it. I think Pack. I think the TFDI guys in Pack X. I think there's a few more people working on that. So but this. You know, self loading cargo. It's gonna be. It's a. It's a really good piece. So if you, um, if you're interested in something to simulate uh, passengers, um, you know, Pack X is a good product. I believe that's fifteen dollars. And if you get this one, it's uh, I think thirteen pounds right now, thirteen euro, um, because it's still in pre-release or whatever. It's not fully got everything in it, but. Like I said, if if you um, if you fly an X plane, it works perfectly fine. An X plane, I think. Um, the unfortunate thing is that he's not releasing um, version 1.6 just for X plane and get you know, prepared for those guys. And a lot of them are like, "God, just release it for us," even though it's not going to work for Microsoft Flight Simulator right now. And, you know, but that that would probably take some work to have. Like, I really actually don't know how why that wouldn't work. I mean. Because as far as I know, the only issue that marks off lights in there is just the, the door issue. But they could add a few more features and you know, with the with the idea that they gave your Microsoft Flight Simulator, you're gonna have an issue. It's really weird. The lens flare is kind of just stays the same exact lens. I suppose that's how it works, right? Yeah. This color, we get, kind of get this kind of like pinkish color. I have that one for like the, when I was doing a Qatar Airlines, there was a flight when I was, I think flying to Djibouti and get this really cool pink and purplish color. That's what we're getting right now. Let's see, it's like almost, it's almost filled the entire sky. 
That's just amazing. Yeah, that it, it blows X-Plane away with the, the sunsets. The, the sunsets and the rises and this kind of time, you get this weird effect going on there. And this, is, this looks amazing. No clouds today. I'm very surprised about that. We're not getting anything. I am using uh, the Medar weather, real weather. Uh, why are we not seeing that? There we go. It's the Unreal Weather Live Medar. And yeah, it's just wind and really high level clouds. <coughs> No, yeah, we are thirty-five thousand. So let's let's ask for thirty-seven. They're gonna probably have us come down right away, though, pretty quick. But that is our clearance. Our our Land. Just about to Kasala and. Almost, it doesn't make actually any sense because once we get to Kasala, we should, you know, that's going to be probably top of descent anyway. We're going to want to start coming down. Uh, well, top of descent is going to be after uh, Tison. So we're going to, yeah, it's like we should have been, top of climb should have been um, basically when we entered the airway after Dendi. <laughs> it just took us so long to get up. Mountains, uh, rock formations, uh, elevation come up here. Clear to see the mountains as we get closer to the coast over there coming up. And obviously with that sun playing off of Yeah, we're going to definitely be no problem coming in for landing, no problem being with visibility. Got 
another river here. Let's see where I'm at. Just about. Going over. Oh, that's Kasala. Below us. A little bit back. Actually, you can see their airport. That's the VOR, and then Kasala. There's Kasala right there. It's actually a pretty. A little bit of a. Right on the river. And they got those mountains. That's, that's kind of cool. Kind of almost like a gateway into there. I just kind of cut in there. So I think that's all, all the suburbs and everything. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's like any natural boundary here between the two countries. Basically, I think the boundary is right there. It's just a line. I just drew a line on the map. Really cool uh, little mountain found formations down here. So we got the time to go, which is 16 minutes. Now it's going to be... Contacting Asmara Center. Yeah, we're kind of getting bounced a little here. Getting some turbulence going up and down. I think we're gonna have a hard time getting down in time. It's gonna be, a, like I said, it's like got up to got up to cruising and then now we're descending. So, I always do find those flights a little interesting, where these shorter flights where they get us up there, like, go to thirty-seven thousand. So by the time I get up there, I'm gonna come down. <laughs> well, we're forty minutes since we uh, began our taxi. Estimated time to uh, arrival is 15 minutes. I'm assuming it's probably gonna that will that time will increase um, as we descend. Oh yeah, about 3,000 feet per minute. Already beginning our arrival. Ladies see our and gentlemen phase. from the cockpit, you may have noticed we've begun descending to our destination. We're not expecting any delays, so we should have you on the ground in the next 20 minutes or so. Yeah, if we'll you automatically do the, 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 the calls if you don't do appreciate. it first. And make sure to fasten your seatbelt. For safety reasons, please turn off all electronic devices or switch into airplane mode until after we have landed. Please note the aircraft toilets are now out of use. Thank you.
here. This is the point. It's a good idea to start putting in our landing information on the performance page. So our look up the Medar for Hotel Hotel Alphas Era. It's Mara International. Uh, visibility is eight kilometers. No ceiling. Our let's see what is it. 29.65 inches mercury, uh, but we want, we needed the Q&H here, so that will translate to 1, 4, temperature is 33, uh, wind is 3 knots at 30 degrees. Transition altitude. Get a little turbulence. Seatbelt. Yep, and our next stop is we're just going to fly right to the airport. So hopefully they give us an approach and stuff before that. Going right to the VOR. <clears throat> Close that. Let's check out the charts for Asmara. So no star charts for. I have no star charts. It looks like we got an ILS for runway 7, and then our runway 25 is an RNAV. Runway 7 has ILS, RNAV, VOR, and uh, NB, NDB. Just gonna pull up one of the charts. Transition altitude is 11,500 feet. I'm assuming that's because of the altitude of the airport. Yeah, the airport elevation is 7,661. So we definitely uh, have gone up in. Our uh, altitude, or not altitude, but our uh, land elevation. But we actually don't have to go down. I mean, that's why the cruise altitude was a uh, 37,000 because we're only going to have to descend 7,000. go back to Tucson. See, it does that kind of thing. We want to go direct to Dixa. Is it going to go to Dixa? There we go. It took us off course because it, it for some reason you put, sometimes you put that in and it'll jump back to that last waypoint. And I don't know if that's, if that's, I'm doing it wrong putting in the the arrival or whatever. Um, but yeah, if you don't catch that, you'll start going the wrong way really quick. And we got a little bit of a hiccup there. Uh, went off course a little bit. Alright, so we... We do have things that I'm doing in R now. So pull up in that chart. Transition altitude 115. Uh, runway elevation is 251 MB. Our final approach, of course, is going to be 252. Um, the VOR is obviously uh, 113.7, so we'll throw that in to here. I and mean, you could actually do, you probably would do this all 
before you even start the flight, have the VOR1 reset to... Oh well, yeah, you, because you probably don't need the VOR for takeoff usually. Uh, VOR113.7, that in, it should give us ASM. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Of course, 252. Pick this approach here on my chart. We're gonna do dig so because just because. Oh, okay, so we could actually have gone just direct. We could have gone to Asmara VOR and then to dig so. so we didn't know. We didn't need to skip tomorrow, but I did. So I'm gonna take that on my flight plan. Nav charts, and here you can see the nav charts. Bring this all up right here. We're gonna go Digsa, and then we're gonna do a hotel, hotel 204, hotel, hotel 201. And you can see we should be at 10,900. Looks like yeah, 10,900. And then Durfo, at Durfo, we're gonna capture. Uh, that's gonna be our way in. We'll take that last 3,000 feet in, landing at the runway. Straight in landing. Decision height is 8300. Alright. Okay, dog. Dog doll was, or dog doll was, uh, we would have gone, hit Osmara and then gone up here, 40 degrees from there. And that's actually how you would do it. I mean, if you didn't have, uh, you didn't have the GPS and the whole all that. You would hit the um, VOR and then go take that 104 degree course. You'd then get digs up and then be able to do a three degree or two, all that. But if you have an FMS, it's a lot easier. You don't have to do all that manually. Where are we at? 15,000. screen doing that. Really annoying. Alright, so we are doing an RNAV approach, so we want to reduce our range. We already have our range reduced. We haven't changed it. Um, barometric reference, we will set that on here once we get that. We can't set it. There's no way to set it that I, at least I know. So we want our ND range uh, reduced. We have it at 10. I'll display our constraints. We'll do that right now. Uh, we'll hit approach mode once we are, I think, lined up. And then on our intercept base leg, we'll hit flaps one, five nautical miles, flaps two, four, uh, landing gear down. Uh, auto brake nose, all that. And we gotta remember this time to turn off the auto throttle so we can actually uh, retard when we get on the ground or as we get close. Yeah, very different, um, very different uh, landscape than Sudan. Very different landscape from where we were in uh, more southern Africa, where a lot more green. And I think people kind of, a lot of got a lot of people. We get the, the sense that Africa's like all desert or it's all jungle or something. It's like, well, it's got all of it because it's uh, the biggest, the second biggest continent in the world, I believe. It's Asia, Africa, I think. Would be how it goes. Alright, we're holding at 14,000. I 
estimated time, 6 minutes, 36 nautical miles out. That's going to kind of go up because we're going to go past the airport and then swing back around coming in the other direction. Flight plan had us coming. Yep, flight plan had us coming in. A sim brief had us coming in. A, a runway two five, just like the takeoff was one eight. Sometimes it goes a completely opposite direction. A flight simulator will tell us to come in the complete opposite direction than sim brief. There you go. Now the VOR is going up. We can actually turn on the VOR. You can see we should be on this. This is what we originally were going to come in, and then we go 40 degrees from there. But we've got it automatically set up. We'll just go direct. I don't think... Yeah, the, this one's not saying we have to switch to uh, one of the roses. No, I think we did Navros last time. Well, Nav, you go Navros for visual, VOR obviously for VOR, and this will be your ILS uh, rows. And I think if you're just doing um, RNAV, just stay on your ARC. Turn this one and we can, on this screen we can kind of see, yep, that path that we're gonna be taking. Kind of make it like a little bit of fish hook. We are level right now. We'll use this opportunity to uh, decrease our speed. 249. That way we're not trying to decrease our speed as we're coming in. Um, because then you're fighting the plane the whole way down. Let me get back to that chart. I have a... So digs that we're going to want to be at flight level 135, and then we're going to be working our way down to 11.5, and then to 10.9. Um, I'm not seeing any speed limits. Well, digs is 18 miles from the airport to final. I think that's 18 to final is what it would be. Um, and... Obviously, we get the dig so we could go into a holding pattern where we'd have to um, maybe three degrees, and then uh, opposite direction obviously would be 183. Uh, it looks like it's a six mile uh, circle. I haven't simulated anything like that on here, and at some point I'm gonna have to try. I don't know if I want to try it with you guys watching and trying to figure it out. I need to watch some more videos on a lot of this stuff. Just get more comfortable with it and know exactly what I should be doing. At the end of the day, I feel it's a successful flight if I get on the ground and we haven't had too many weird things happen during the flight and I haven't done so many weird stuff, but it is nice to get it the exact right way. Let me check some of our reports here. No crew issues, no medical issues. Report for the ground, well, ground attack report. Oh, this one might show if you have like some malfunction, something goes wrong. And then we got our notification. We're expected 34 minutes. Okay, there is actually an expectation clock. Um, that's our scheduled time, so we have 34 minutes. We're two, you know, it's saying two minutes to the airport. The airport. We actually able to see it. What side is playing? Landscape. Glad the plane isn't shaking. Glad the weather has improved. The air is lovely and smooth. I didn't think the weather was too bad. We did get a little bit of turbulence. Again, the amazing, just the, the really great. I mean, that little village down there just looks so cool. I like these African villages, how they show up. It, it, because there's just so much stuff going on there. It's not so generic. Even though I'm sure if you got closer, the buildings aren't. They have good models, archetypes for these smaller little villages. You can see some villages over there. Um, I'm not sure what this place is right here. 
those are some greenhouses. Or if those are, that's something military. Could be, we are coming up to the capital of uh, Eritrea. That could be something military. Can't tell if those are, if those are greenhouses or buildings, like apartment complexes or barracks. There's the runway right there. So, if we had stayed on our course to um, the VOR, we would have flown right on that path. Runway, um, uh, what's the opposite of 25? That would have been runway um, 7. But we're going to fly out of the way over this way. And we're going to swing around and pinch it in because there's more obstacles we got to worry about there with the mountains, actually. Trying to, trying to get a sense of how the this land lay. It feels like it kind of is falling off a little bit. Actually, it seems like the land is kind of curving down, and then you have the elevations kind of come back up. So, as Mara itself is kind of up here, that's what it looks like, doesn't it? And it's kind of curving down. In fact, it looks like it kind of goes off on a cliff there. Elevation really dips going into the ocean, going into the Red Sea. That's really cool. See the city of Asmara right there? Yeah, it's kind of on the edge of this like plateau. And so actually those mountains aren't higher. They're lower. <laughs> but it you know just kind of plays tricks with your eyes. That is Why are we, you see, it just decided to skip. It just decided to skip the... No, 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 no. What? It just skipped, it just skipped the whole, um... <laughs> it, just, it just went right to runway 25, it skipped the rest of the... I don't know why it's doing that. Let's see if I can... I go direct to Digsa. There we go. Why did it do that? It just said, no, nah, we're going to go direct to the runway. That is so weird. Like, did I hit something? No. Oh. All right, um, what did ATC say? Q&H, we're 300 feet below our assigned altitude. No, oh, we're at 14. Because yeah, the Q&H, and I think we'll actually... Echo, Romeo, Tango, descend and maintain 12,000 feet. There we go. What's that? 12,000 feet. Descend and maintain 12,000 feet, Eritrea. Got our speed down to 240. Okay, again, we need it at Digsa, we need to be at 13.5. Right, they're they're going to get us down. Um, hotel, hotel 204. It's about 11,500 they want us at. get slowed down because as soon as we get over to um, make this turn, we're going to start uh, things are going to start happening fast. So the airport is now over there, right? Now. We are cleared for approach. Cleared for landing or approach? It would be for approach. Yeah. Runway 25 approach. Yeah, it's like kind of on that, on this plateau, and then everything kind of falls off. Very similar to the way like Jerusalem and that is uh, Israel. All right, kind of it's on that high point and then everything slopes down, which makes sense. You're sloping down to the Mediterranean Sea, the body of water. All right, we're at Digsa. We're gonna make our turn now. 
I think we have flight, you can see the constraint showing up there, flight level 115, when we get to hotel, hotel 204. For some reason it's skipping that one again. 204, please. Thank you. I don't know why the insistence on skipping the waypoint. Let's just take it in where we're supposed to take it in. Remember our transition altitude is 11.5. Now I'm wondering if you would have your, if your, would you have, is it 10,000 feet above the ground where you're supposed to have the landing lights? That's why I, I would assume that is. Now see, I don't know what over here they're gonna do. They're probably gonna say, hey, you had your landing lights above 10,000 feet. I'm gonna turn them on because we are pretty much on the ground <laughs> at this point. Well, it's inaccessible. Is there a way to be able to have the cabin crew repair? Not sure when I get that. Okay, we got our lights on. Arm our spoilers. We'll start arming our flaps. Our land our brake. Make our turn to Hotel Hotel 201. And we need to be at 10 9 for that. You oh, see, should clear us to that. But make sure we locked in on that. Should be on our final course for 252 after this next turn. And we'll pick up the RNAV. At uh, Durfo. Once we get into our uh, final uh, course. I don't think I need to wait until the final course. I think I can actually hit approach right now. Leave. Do we need to hit localizer? I didn't see that on the, it's not saying localizer. Five nautical miles from FTP. Is that, you know, the FTP, that might actually be the, I don't know, <laughs> if that's the, the, the capture point. You can see we're lined up with the VOR as well, so if we want the VOR, good too. It's the runway. Go flaps one. Approach mode. Yeah, it looks right. I don't know if this actually has us descend though, if we have to do the descent. Woo! I think we, I think it are now. Do we have to descend ourselves? We might. Yeah. So it looks like. Oh, we can do a ripple speed here. See, now we're not getting the R now. So that's, I, I'm, yeah, I don't know what I'm supposed to do there. Do I, do I take it in? Let's tell me I need the gear.
We're about the wrong Airplane slope now. A little off to the right. What I could do is I could do that VOR since we have that as well. Crew, we get ready to. Crew, uh, I think Thank we might be too shallow now. Yeah, a little bit too shallow. One thousand. Shallow, I think. Decision height. I right, just need to kind of load a little here. My crew, get seated. There we go. There we are. A little slow, too. What are the four white mean that we're too high? Uh, I don't 400 know. I feel like we're too high, actually. Oh, no. <laughs> 300. Yeah, we're too high. We're going to go around. There are flaps. Well, not yet. I mean, a few flaps. Ladies and gentlemen, as you might have noticed, we did in fact report our land and attempt to death. Um, we decided it would be safer to try to circle around to try again. Hopefully, the winds will be in our favor a little bit uh, more this time. And uh, we'll get you safely on the ground as soon as possible. So, in the meantime, if you could just keep your belts fastened, and uh, we'll make another attempt in a few moments. Thank you. See over here. All right, we're gonna do a do a go around here. Asmara Center, Eritrea, and Echo Romeo Tango two one four is missed approach at Asmara. Eritrea two one four, climb and maintain fourteen thousand feet. Eritrea two one four, you are two miles west. Climb and maintain fourteen thousand feet. Expect our net runway two five approach by a dog all transition. Clear to dog all. Runway two five yet, so let's get direct to Digsa again. Like I said, it's like usually don't do this a ton, so. Good time to try it. Got time to do it. Extend the live stream a little bit. Why not? <laughs> but yeah, we were too high. I completely blanked like which way the light should be. You know, I think there. If it's all, if there's too many reds, you're too low. Whites I mean you're too high. So we're gonna be a little late, as you can see. Expected. We still have 18 minutes, so I think we might be able to get in time. We were ahead of schedule. heard that uh, you can see there's the runway uh, we'll keep it at uh, 2962 if he wants to come up to 14,000 we're gonna have to come back down there's the runway again it's a 
we'll just do everything we did and just do it again. This time making sure that I start coming in for the, the landing. Again, I thought RNAV does RNAV capture a glide slope? I guess. Sometimes I get some warning things I don't know. Descend and maintain. Yeah, I'd love to, but for some reason it's not doing that. Okay, it's because I'm above the transition. Like I said, I'm not a, I'm not. I'm looking up about the RNAV in Flight Simulator, and some people, some, it should take us down, should have the glide slow, kind of like on ILS, and it, it obviously should keep us laterally, but I wasn't, it wasn't descending, so, obviously, I think we'll, we'll manually take it in, you know, we could, or we could use vertical speed, but I'm not sure what I'd want to set it for vertical speed, actually. If I want to not have to fly it manually, so. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know completely what I'm doing when it comes to, you know, RNAV, you know, RNAV. I know exactly how to use ILS because I use that a lot. Okay, it's in climb and maintain. We're at 14,000. Tell me something I don't know. All right. We're going to go around for our approach again. Try it again. Add a little time to the flight. Um, we have that extra fuel. We barely burned any fuel. Um, sometimes I think they really overestimate or something. I don't know what it is, but that's what it is. Got the fuel there. Barely 1,200 or 1,800 kilos. We could easily fly around a little bit. And that's why they do that, so you can do your, you know, if you have to fly around in, in a holding pattern, if you have to do a missed approach or two um, for what, whatever it is, if you need to go to the alternate, that's why you have that extra. Satisfaction went down a little bit, but it's still at 100%. 99.579%, uh, but that's pretty good considering we're doing a missed approach. I'm not sure why I can't uh, do the auto. Descend and maintain 11,000 feet. Air train 214. Like it won't automatically go down? Or is it? Okay, it is going down. But you won't do that. Tower Air Train 21417 
again, flying over these mountains. Yeah, we should get, we're, we're probably going to get this, several in cars are probably going to dance for having our lights on over 10,000 feet. But again, I think that's 10,000 feet over the ground. And that'd be 17,000, so they might ding us for not having it at 17,000 feet. We'll see. That might be why I've been dinged for it, and I thought I shouldn't be, because it's not actually at 10,000. Okay, so it's going to skip 201 again. Not sure why it's doing that. Go to where we're supposed to go, please. There you go. I'll make it harder than it needs to be. I'm glad that direct two. I, I've never been, you know, I used to not be able to figure out how to use that direct two, and then lately I've been able to do that, and it saved so many headaches. It's amazing. We need to be at 11.5. At Hotel Hotel 2 so we're a little high. I'm not, I'm not sure why it's taking so long to descend here now. Ground spoilers are armed. A deer's... What is that one? A deer's uh, SWTJ. I don't know what that means. That's a new one. I haven't seen that. Just in time. And then we want to be at 10 9. Technically. We'll fly this in manually and hopefully we'll get the right uh, glide slope. I was I was going three degrees right here, but that's a three degree. I wasn't I wasn't you know descending at three degrees, I was just kind of maintaining a little bit. It wasn't going. Yeah, see, I need to learn the math here because it's like, okay, what's, you know, depending on my distance out, what do I need my vertical speed, you know, to be, to get down or what do I, you know, whatever it is, if I want to have it automatically take me in there. Okay, we are now at Q and H. We're actually a little low. Speed is slowing down as we come in. Flaps one. Flaps a little high speed there. We need to start getting down. Yeah, the auto throttle kept us at too high a speed. Now we gotta kinda fill that. There we go. And we're full. Gear down. high again. We weren't actually descending. There we go. So we want to be right about there for our descent. Uh, is that, uh, we got 10. We're just between two and a half and five. About right there. It's about three degrees. A little bit off to the right. I like to throw the VOR rows on because then I can... Actually, we're fine. The VOR is telling us we're fine there, but 
visually, it doesn't look like we're lined up at all. To land runway two five, Eritrean, two one Let's four. get uh, lined up so we don't have to do another huh, go around. Make sure we also got the throttle because we have turned all automatic. The auto throttle, everything is off. Two thousand five hundred. Crew gets seated. They really wait until the last second, don't they? There we go. I got one red. Now we're in business. Yeah, I think I saw that red, and I had to go. Like, oh, I have to clear. I have to go up to get more reds. So like, oh, we need to go. Don't see. Don't see. There we go. I get too far down. A little bit of throttle. Speaking out about the sink rate. Get a little bit of throttle. Three hundred. come and do a turnaround. Nice lane. All right, well, I like that. 181, not bad. Floated a little bit, but we had plenty of runway. Um, I think the float made it that we couldn't get slowed down and turn off right away, but not a big deal. Not a terribly busy airport, so we can do the turnaround just fine. Get our wheels, brakes a little hot. Oh, my brake, auto brake went away. <laughs> Probably as we were flying around, that uh, turned off. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, we just flew from Khartoum to Asmara, Khartoum, Sudan to Asmara, Eritrea, Eritrean Airlines. Uh, started the flight, took off around 5.30 in the morning, I think, and it is now, I don't have a time on me, but it's probably 6.30, 7 o'clock. Actually, you can look at the, yeah, it's probably... Almost seven o'clock, it looks like. In the morning, Vladimir. Were you just not able to get the Vladimir in there, or, or was that a, uh, or is the, um, is that how you would put it? Because it's like a Y to me, showing up as, or is that just how it would be like Cyrillic, maybe I don't know. Sometimes it's like that. You get the different. Uh, uh, letters representing different things. 
Yeah, it was a nice landing, actually. Uh, we had to do a go-around because uh, I was a little too high the first time. Oh, at that decision height, we cranked it and... We uh, survived. The APU started. Turn off the protective wind shear and... Uh, turn off the PCAS. Um, we gotta get in contact with ground. I wish the co-pilot would continue contact with this. Uh, we need a taxi for parking options. And there's not gonna give us any of that. So we're gonna just find our own spot, I guess. Looks like we have... Probably this is the best... Well, actually, I'm gonna say our best option is here, but that looks... Better. We got all the services right there. This is probably the fuel box. Very interesting, like, layout to their taxiway. It's like kind of this curve thing going on. Do they have another? I think they have another runway there, actually. They might actually have two runways. But I don't think it's open. We're cruising here a little bit too fast. So where are you from, Vladimir? Or where are you, at least, maybe where are you living, but where are you from? Alright, anyway, we got, uh, we are parked. I don't know if that's the way you would park it here, but that's the way we are. It looks like they got, like, another runway or something. Yeah, there's a whole different thing over there, but it's not showing up. I guess it must not be active or something. That's an old runway, it looks like, over there. That's why they have that. All right, we are set our parking brake. Let me get my landing checklist. We did that, a thrust lever. We did the go around. Didn't jump to the right place on the um, thing there. But after landing, weather radar flaps, so you guys, all that. Parking brake, anti-ice, if you bleed. Get our APU going before we shut off the engines. Uh, beacon light is off. Nose light is off. Strobe light uh, can go off as well. Uh, nav logo light, we'll keep that on for now. Fuel pumps off. Actually wanna, it doesn't say, oh yeah, engine master switches right there. So, engine two, we should be at normal actually. And engine one off. We'll see those spool down. Get our ending screen for Microsoft Flight Simulator. We had that night takeoff, early morning, and a day landing. Hour 10, or an hour 21 for the flight. A little bit longer because we had that go around. Our engine is off. We have the APU. Um, and they want to open the doors. We're going to make sure that door is open. Let's see if we can get stairs here, though. So the passengers don't fall off the side. Stairs are coming. Once again, don't you jump out. With us today. On behalf of myself, the first officer, and the cabin crew, we wish you a safe and pleasant journey from the airport and hope to see you again soon. Thanks for flying with us. Cabin crew, the aircraft is secure. Please open doors. Thank you. Yeah, there's a door issue, so I wanted to get that door open just so it wouldn't get all crazy. Uh, let's do our take off the seatbelts. Seatbelt sign. And start. Should be deboarding now. I believe. Yep. Are they deporting? They're port deporting on this from this door. Looks like, right? Yeah, they're deporting on the right side. That's weird. Or deporting both ways. That's interesting. 
know why they're doing that. All right, back inside. We want to turn off. We turned off the fuel pump. No, we didn't. Off means there. We're gonna have the white lights. Uh, turn off our adheres. Uh, turn off the crew oxygen supply. Once we have the external power, hook that up. Turn off the APU. Turn off the nav logo light. Turn off the no smoking. Uh, emergency exit lights. Don't need those. Um, I think that's pretty much it for that. A little bit hot on the brakes. Should have external power. Oh, it's still his way over. I don't know what the luggage crew is doing. I have a feeling. Yeah, you know what's going on. I have a feeling we should have parked this way, and so let's do it. Everything's looking. The power goes where it needs to go. Everything else kind of has a set place. It's like, oh well, this is the place. See, it's still <laughs> unloading from a whole weird place. Or external power, so APU bleed off, massive switch. Um, and that is all we need to do uh, inside the plane. Uh, we can, if we wanted to, we could clear, uh, turn down the brightness and everything so the next crew, if they come in the morning, uh, won't be blinded. But where are we at? Basically, ever you see how they quickly they get off board um, with self loading cargo versus Pack X, where I have to have it at. Uh, not realistic speed, otherwise it takes forever. Oh, we got a few more people just jumped in here at the end. Yeah, today, today not a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of normal guys didn't show up. That's all right. It was, you know, it wasn't uh, on the schedule or anything, and it kind of just went, just went live. Uh, so people can watch uh, after the fact. And in any way, it was a great flight. Um, successful go around and landing. Really good landing, I think. A uh, nice landing there. And we got three seated. It's saying we have three seated. Um, are we gonna get off? I do. Even though I see five seated, but it's saying three. We got 22 people on board. I don't know where. So again, here's another issue with um, the door and uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator is that things don't wanna finish. So we're just gonna do an instant D board. Oops. There we go. And the car goes on loading, the cleaning. And we can do a turnaround now. So basically we could just do another flight and go from here, wait for the turnaround, set a next flight up and everything. But I like, you know, we have to change our colors. We're gonna be doing um, Egypt Air next. And that will be next time I'm home because going back out on the road to drive and probably be, could be next week, could be end of the month. want to get home for 4th of July and then we'll have a couple weeks of vacation I think the 11th through the 20th or something so there'll be quite a few live streams there. Our next flight will be from Asmara Eritrea to um, Cairo, Egypt. Uh, Egypt Air. Close that main door. And well let's view the flight report. Look at that. A plus. I like that. That's great. That's probably one of my best flights actually. This was a perfect flight, communicated effectively during all critical flight phases, ensuring their safety or control of the aircraft was faultless, which makes for very comfortable passengers. Your landing was good, passengers remained comfortable, and you ensured safe control of the aircraft by touching down dively. Good job. Overall your passengers were slightly happier after flying with you. Good work. So we were off the blocks a little bit, you know, uh, five minutes early. That's good. On time. Our scheduled arrival, we were exactly on time. That's amazing uh, that we were we had to go around to that. Put us right on the dot for our scheduled arrival. Excellent work to part on time. Managed to arrive on time too. Uh, G-Force maximum 1.31, minimum 0.68. Roll 30 degrees, that's what you want. Uh, you don't want anything much more than that. 27, max pitch 17. Max pitch down 3 degrees, which is, again basically what you want you don't want to go much more than that this is yeah this is the cleanest flight I've had um everything's green a plus wow one uh, that's great again we can go to some of my other flight reports just to see yeah that's my best flight I like how it's like a 1% improvement though I don't know what that's over <laughs> because you know last flight was a D plus so I don't know but awesome. I like that. Really great flight. 
Um, Subway and Carter worked out very well. Yeah, I. <laughs> it, it was good. That was a manual landing too. I and mean, we shut everything off and just came in. Um, let me pull up Volanta and see what Volanta shows. So there's our flight in gray. We can review that. Um, I wish it wouldn't show all the other flights at the same time. Just show me my. Just show me the one flight. But uh, there's our flight. Um, uh, ignore the picture. I didn't update that. But you can see the altitude. Right there's that go around. And then coming in for the landing. Landing rate 184. So basically the same thing. G force right around 1, which is what you want. 161 passengers. Fuel burn just under 2,000 kilos. Uh, distance was 475, but we added a little bit there going around. You see the go around. Right there. Uh, landing speed 147, flight time 120 or one hour 21 minutes, and the block time 133. So, good flight. All right. So, I mean, basically we have a Vladimir. We have a couple. I think we what do we have a couple people in here? Um, please like the video. I see we got four likes. Um, if you're watching after the fact, uh, same thing. Comment below. Uh, give it a like. Um, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you haven't already, and um, uh, share the video. Um, you know, I come along for the ride. Uh, we check Eritrea off the list. Um, next, before the next flight, we'll show the world map and everything. Uh, and next flight will be going from here, Asmara, up to Cairo, and hopefully we'll get to see some of the. Uh, well, next flight will be Egypt Air, but I have been I have been toying with um, doing some, uh, getting out of just doing the world uh, things and doing a few flights in America. Maybe even getting into a smaller plane. And uh, because yesterday I was flying um, Western Wisconsin, which is right over here, and this area is a lot of um, a lot of hills, farms, really beautiful area, and I I, I want to kind of fly over there uh, with. Maybe a smaller plane, do a little bit of sightseeing. Just a short flight, nothing too long, maybe an hour. Um, but yeah, I, I'd like to do some American flights to American Airlines, and you know. But I'm trying to do this world tour thing, and it's really fun to go other places. But yeah, of course, we'll probably scatter in a few of those when I have the chance, especially in July when I can get a few more flights in. And if I want to throw a shorter flight in there, and I have like a six-hour flight coming up in the world tour, and I just want to do like a. 20 minute short flight or something yeah we'll get in some smaller planes maybe or definitely get some get over into america a little bit if if that's what you guys would like to see um but the main goal the main the main events are going to be uh, the, this world tour next flight up to egypt and then over to uh jeddah uh, saudi arabia and then over to dubai so there'll be a couple next three flights are going to be pretty cool so uh, thanks for following along. Again, uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that stuff. And until next time, keep the blue side up and take care.